counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Wherefore the ungodly shall not stand in the day of judgment, stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And if we can turn to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 8. Beautiful passage of scriptures as well. So Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 8. And he shall be like and he shall be as a tree planted by the rivers of, by, by the waters, and and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see what heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Notice it says her. Whereas in uh, Psalm, Psalm 1, it mentioned, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I was asking the Lord and what to preach on tonight. And I was, I was going my walk. Uh, 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 I was going my walk to uh, try, try to lose a bit of weight. And I was noticing the beauty, uh, the beauty of springtime. And uh, you can see the buds and the trees, uh, the, the leaves starting to bud and the trees and the colour coming through it. And it's beautiful. And you can hear the birds chirping away. And I was praying to the Lord and what to preach on tonight. And the Lord uh, said, we are looking at what, what I want you to preach on. I was looking at the trees. And that's what I, I'm going to be preaching on tonight. Uh, as I say, when I was praying and the Lord was guiding me uh, to speak about God's people being these trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth their fruit in their season. I read that it's not just he, but it's she, and Je as it says in Jeremiah. And it's basically that, that Psalm 1 was about the, the, the king. And brothers and sisters, Zion, here in Zion, we've been blessed with beautiful truths. It says in Psalm 1, uh, planted by the rivers of water. This tree was planted and praise God, we've been planted in this beautiful church. Think about something being planted, it's secure. And this, uh, this tree, if, if you know anything about trees, they spread their roots right under the water. It's very difficult to uproot a tree. And praise God tonight that I'm looking at wonderful examples of faithfulness, people that have put their roots down here in Zion. Trees are mentioned all over the word of God. Straight away in Genesis, you, you hear of the Lord of God planting all these beautiful trees for Adam and Eve to enjoy. And Adam and Eve were told not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It also mentions the tree of life. And uh, as a result of their disobedience, they were put out from the, the Garden of Eden, as, as we know. And the, the Lord set chibums to guard the tree of life. I'll just read uh, Genesis 3, 24. So he drove the, out man and placed at the, east, at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. That must have been quite a formidable image, turning every way. The Lord was making sure that this tree was protected. It says in Genesis 2, 9, and out of the ground made the Lord God to go every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as I just mentioned. Mentions in Revelations, the last book of the Bible. In Revelations 2 and 7. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh. I will give to eat of the tree of life, 
which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And it says in Revelations 22 and 2, in the midst of the streets of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And it says in Isaiah 53 in verse 2, where the Lord Jesus is compared to this tree, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of the dry ground, and he have no form of comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. It also says for those, and it also says in the word of God, for those that die in a tree, they're accursed. Jesus took that curse for you, and he took that, that curse, hallelujah, he took that for me. And that says that in Deuteronomy 21 and 22. And if a man committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to put to death, and thou shalt hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is cursed of God, and the, thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God, God giveth thee for an inheritance. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus took that curse on a tree. The, the tree speaks of strength. It speaks of durability. A tree can stand for thousands of years. And it, it, the Lord has even given a tree a sign every, every year a ring goes round it. Kind of like us, when we get older and we start to get rings going all the way around our faces, except they're wrinkles. <laughs> Jesus says in a... John chapter 15 and 1, and Brother Robert has been preaching on the I am's of God. I'm not going to be preaching on the I am's of God, I'm just going to be touching on it. I am the, I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept ye abide in me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. Hallelujah. He that, that, that hallelujah was near that, that was just me, sorry. <laughs> uh, he that ye accept ye abide in me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If a, man, if a man abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and may gather themselves and cast them into the fire. And they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye shall will, and, ye shall, and it shall be done unto you, wherein my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so that ye may be my disciples. As my Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall ab abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And as we read in the, as we read in Psalm 1, the, the psalmist David tells us how to abide in the Lord. It says, and he shall meditate upon his word day and night. The word of the Lord shall remain in our hearts throughout the morning, throughout the day, and as we go to sleep at night. The word of God should reside in our hearts. Jesus was a carpenter's son. What does a carpenter work with? A carpenter works with wood, and that comes from a tree. The Lord worked with wood and works in the hearts of us, his people. The Lord says that his father prunes, that his father would prune us as a gardener. And it's no coincidence that when Mary went to, after the Lord was crucified and was laid in the tomb the following day, Mary went to the tomb and she, the, the Lord asked her and she supposed him to be a gardener. That was no accident. The Lord is 
uh, the gardener, and he, and he wants to prune our lives and for us to be more and more like him. What a thrill it is that the, Christ, uh, that the Christian has that we're not only trees, but we've been grafted in to the, the, the Israel of God, as we've been taught here in Zion. It says in Romans 11 and 17, and if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wilt well, grafted in among them, and with, the, and with them partaketh of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Brothers and sisters, what a thrill that is ours, that we have been not just planted in this church, but we've been taught beautiful truths. We've been nourished by the rivers of, be- of pure doctrine from the word of God here in Zion. That should thrill our hearts. I know it thrills me. It says in Ephesians 4 and 5, uh, 14 that he henceforth do be no more children tossed through to and fro and carried away about with the wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And what a blessing it is that I can see brothers and sisters who have remained faithful in this house of God because when they've been taught the beautiful truths that the pastor brought out, that they've, they went away and studied it. Robert talks about that quite a lot. When the pastor preached, he went away and studied the word and he made that word his own. He was a tree that wasn't tossed about with to or fro with the wind of doctrine as the apostle Paul was speaking here. God has brought this church and raised it up for a specific purpose. What was the pastor's scriptural calling? I'll read it. Jeremiah 1 and 9, as we all know. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have my word in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And what a blessing this beautiful almond tree speaks of, because it speaks of divine favor and approval. And the pastor's ministry was blessed with divine approval eh, and favor. Uh, I'm stuttering and stammering, but what I'm trying to say is, that the Lord is the Lord greatly blessed the pastor's ministry, and the Lord is continuing to bless the pastor's ministry. As you have probably been listening to the pastor's ministry that's been distributed, the pastor's beautiful truths eh, that, that from the Word of God is there at our disposal. We can access these beautiful truths and the doctrines of grace, Christ's deity, Christ's sonship, humanity, eh, believers' baptism. You know, at my at my course. They were debating about covenant theology and they were discussing this, uh, this, uh, this doctrine and that doctrine. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, as I told you a couple of weeks ago, and I was sitting there thanking God that for a very young age, the Lord had taught me in this beautiful church the beautiful truths. I, what a blessing it is that we've been taught uh, the doctrines of grace, that we've been predestined before the very that we've been uh, predestined before the very foundation of the world. These, are, these, are, these beautiful truths have not to be taken for granted. While, while there's brothers and sisters like, your, like yourselves who came from all different churches, there's Linda, who was a Catholic, there's others who were Arminian, and the Lord had to unteach them the, the heresies of the, uh, the, the, the Church of Rome and the heresy of Arminianism. Yet there's those amongst us who were brought up in this church, like myself, who weren't taught Arminianism, who weren't taught covenant uh, infant baptism or pedo-baptism. I was taught, as as we were here, we were taught that it's, uh, it's believer's baptism and the beautiful truth that that believer's baptism is. It's a testament to what's already happened within our hearts. It says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he build upon it. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, which is the text below me. 
It's upon, it's, and we've got a responsibility with the blessings that we have. I, Robert often speaks about what do we do with these beautiful truths? Do we listen to the minister? Uh, do, do, we li do we listen to the preacher and say, oh, that was a couple of nice points, and then forget about it? Or do we do as Robert did when the pastor preached, took the beautiful truths, meditated on them, made them his own, and he was up there shouting glory, hallelujah, when the pastor was bringing these things out? The river of uh, the, uh, we here in, in Zion have been planted. We've got a responsibility, as I say, that trees planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. We've got a responsibility to bring forth fruit for the Lord and for his glory. It says uh, in Charles Spurgeon, when he was speaking on the treasury of David, mentioned about the rivers, the rivers of pardon, the rivers of grace, the rivers of promise and the rivers of communion with Christ are never failing resources to supply. And brothers and sisters, that's what we've been blessed with. These beautiful doctrines that we've got, that this, that this uh, tree was planted by, was planted with these rivers of water. It's not just one river. It's not just, it says rivers, plural. And brothers and sisters, we've been well nourished here in Zion. The Lord has, has not failed to supply our needs, even with the pastor passing away so many years ago, the Lord is still providing us. You know, I was, while preparing this, I was looking at the various different trees in the Bible. I'm just going to uh, list them and what I was, uh, what I was, a couple of notes that I've added to them. There are various types of trees. The olive tree that brings, that brings forth oil, speaking of the consecration to the Lord. The fig tree that brings forth figs that speak of sweet taste. The early crop at the time of the Passover. Uh, the, the early, the, there's, there's two times that the, that doesn't make good grammatical, you know what I mean? There's twice in the, in the year where the figs uh, are ripe. In the, in the springtime, or, uh, in time for the Passover, and are, uh, they're most ripe in September. And that's in time for most of the, the Jewish holidays, like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and the Feast of the, the, uh, the Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles, the vine that's produced, that produces grapes, and that's sweet to the taste, and it makes wine. And there's also the bramble tree. I'm in my, in my, my studies at ETS at the moment, I'm doing a, an essay on Abimelech in uh, Judges chapter 9 and how he tried to take the, uh, the kingship by force and he killed his 70 brothers and, uh, with the exception to uh, Jotham. And Jotham stood on a mountain and preached about uh, trees, asking the olive tree, asking the fig tree and asking the, uh, the vine and the bramble tree uh, to... To, to rule over them. And it was the bramble tree that responded. And Jotham compared Abimelech, his brother, his half-brother, to this bramble tree. And a bramble tree, while it's got nice fruit, it's got a lot of thistles, and it's got a lot of uh, thorns in it, I beg your pardon. It's got a lot of thorns, and it's quite prickly. And uh, then there's also uh, the almond tree, which I mentioned, and that represents uh, sweetness, the root word for almond signifies to be awakened. And that was this, the scripture that the pastor, uh, the pastor was called to. Uh, it mentions the rod of almond. It, may, it speaks of an awakened, uh, being awakened. And that was what was needed when the pastor was called. He was called to root out, to pull down, and to plant and to build. And then there's the oak tree. And that is mentioned as a place in the Old Testament where people went to practice divination. And it was a place where people went to consult with seers and prophets. The oak was also where the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. Isaiah 61 and 3 says that, that they may be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and he may be glorified. And if you see an oak, an oak can stand for many, many years. Uh, where I stay in the south side of Glasgow, there's a beautiful oak tree in Darnley, and it's been standing there for over 400 years. 
and it's majestic. I mean, as, as, in terms of trees, it, it, its its roots are ma massive, and its trunk is massive, and it, you could tell it had been standing there for many, many years. And brothers and sisters, I was thinking of that oak tree, and I was thinking how uh, it, it speaks of wisdom. And uh, I think of the brothers and sisters here in Zion, brothers and sisters that have been faithful for many years, that I can look to as an example of true Christianity. And they've got wisdom. You can, when you speak to them, you can feel the power of Christ from them, like Brother Robert, like Brother Johnny, like Kenny, and many others. It says in Jeremiah 17 and 7, as I just read at the beginning, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whosoever hope in the in, in whose in whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river. God has provided a God provided a good for Jonah uh, in Jonah chapter four and six, and when he was still sitting scunnered, the Lord caused a worm to go in and eat up the good. God provided jo uh, Noah with an olive leaf. It says in Genesis 8 and 11, and the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, her mouth was with an olive leaf plucked off, so Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. For the time I've got left, I'm kind of running out of time, for the time I've got left, I'm going to do a short cross state. And I, when I say short, I do mean I'll, I'll uh, run through it uh, uh, on the tree. Just four letters. T is for testimony. R is for root. E is for example. And the, 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 the last D is for expectation. When I was looking at uh, looking into this tree, uh, the, the, the trees, trees respond to light. And that's why in spring we get the, the trees starting to, to bud because the, the nights are getting brighter and there's more light in the sky and the light and, and the trees respond to light. And that's the way the Christians should be. Uh, they should respond to the light of the world, which is the Lord Jesus. And we should be lights of the world reflecting the Lord and re reflecting as trees uh, reflect the light by, uh, by starting to bud and there's a bit of life that comes into them. Uh, the tree is, a vit is vital to the ecosystem. Trees and all plants, in fact, use the energy for sunlight and through photosynthesis, they take carbon dioxide from the air and water from the ground in a process uh, and, and it releases oxygen. And as Christians, as I said a moment ago, we should reflect the Lord in our life and people around us should be affected. I mentioned those brothers and sisters here in Zion, that when you speak to them, that you, you actually feel the presence of God. You actually get uh, I, 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 that the Lord was with you when you spoke to them because they, re they, they reflect the glory of God. With the teaching in Zion, how's our testimony to those around us? Hallelujah. Uh, I've got wonderful examples of true Christianity with the brothers and sisters here in Zion. The examples of lovely saints who, uh, whose testimony is amazing. Those who have remained faithful to the Lord for most of their life and have been these tr uh, trees planted by the rivers of water and have brought forth fruit uh, in due season. The testimony of God providing for them even in their highs and their lows and have stayed faithful throughout. The testimony of the Christian should be a uh, the, the testimony of a Christian. It should be a pleasure to be around them. When you're overheating, it me, I don't sweat. And uh, when I'm overheating and I'm, I'm out on my walk, like for example today, it was a beautiful day, but it was too warm for me. And I had to walk beside the trees in the shade. The tree provides it uh, provided me today with shade. And today, brothers and sisters, as Christians, we should provide. The Lord, uh, people, when people come up to us in our day-to-day -day lives, people should know that we have been with Jesus. R is for root. And a tree uh, is not only a tall structure, but, uh, but its, it's roots uh, spread far, far below the earth. And that's symbolic in a Christian's prayer life and the study of the God's word in private. It says in Matthew 6 and 5, and when thou prayest, 
Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the rewards. As these trees that have been planted, as trees planted here in Zion, uh, we should have a, a strong prayer life. We should be studying the word. As I preached a couple of weeks ago, we should be meditating in the word in the morning, carrying that word throughout the day, and going to sleep with that word, as it says in Psalm 1. How about in Zion, uh, what I get blessed with is we Charlotte. Charlotte's not here tonight, but Charlotte is an example of somebody who is a, a godly woman, who is a beautiful example of Christianity. When you speak to her, you can feel the love of God uh, coming through her face. And you know that in her private time, her strength and her roots are from studying God's word, from uh, spending time before the Lord. And that sister needs my prayers, prayers tonight. When I was a young boy here in Zion, I was about 12 years old and I was sitting well, Daniel's uh, sitting, and I was, uh, I think it was in a, a prayer meeting like this, and I was watching the pastor, and when I was watching him, I was thinking, my goodness, that old man is amazing, and I, a wee 12-year-old boy, and I remember standing up praying, Lord, thank you for that old man uh, who's preaching, and I, and I meant it with all my heart. I didn't mean any disrespect, but it, it just overwhelmed me that that man, the pastor, oozed uh, uh, Christ. He's, 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 you could feel the anointing, even, at, even you could recognize that anointing, even as a 12 year old. E is for example, and I've mentioned uh, my, my last point of uh, being an example uh, of Christians who have been planted and bring forth their fruit in their season and are excellent examples. We should be excellent examples to the unconverted, to the, to the unbelievers, and to those who are young Christians. And we should be able to look, as we can do in Zion, to older Christians as an example, as, as we can follow, follow them as they follow Christ. And we can do that with confidence because they're, they're steeped in the word of God. But there are some Christians who, when they produce fruit, it's a sour fruit. With what we all know, some Christians, when you meet them or, or when you see them coming towards you, you do an about turn or you want to do an about turn and avoid them because the fruit that they're producing is uh, toxic. Uh, when, you, when they speak to you, they're always criticizing or they're always moaning about something or they're always uh, thinking, this is the right, I'm going to make a statement here or they're, they're doing something that's not edifying, that's not encouraging. As, a, as a, an older Christian, we should be encouraging to those we meet, both unconverted and uh, to the, what my brothers and sisters, we should be approachable. And when people approach us, they should walk away saying, that's a beautiful saint of God. And that you can tell when somebody is uh, like that, who's that like, who produces sour fruit, because they're not spending time before the Lord in prayer. They're not meditating upon the word. They're busy about their hobby, or they're busy about uh, looking up things that are going to cause tension. They're not meditating upon the things of God. They're not bringing the, uh, their brothers and sisters before the Lord in prayer. Brothers and sisters, we should look at these sort of Christians as an anti-type of what not to do. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, as I say, we've encountered uh, Christians that instead of growing in grace and becoming these big, beautiful trees, they're stunted, they're stunted trees and they're stunted Christians. They don't bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. They, they continually say, well, you know me. They say, eh, well, you should be doing this or you should be doing that instead of how can I pray for you? How can I encourage you? And what I'm trying to say is the challenge to each and every single one of us tonight is what is the fruit that's coming through our heart? Is it, is it the fruit of the Spirit that fills our life? And what examples are we to the unconverted? And what examples are we to young Christians, to even older Christians? I've been blessed here in Zion. I've seen a wonderful example of true Christianity. You think of people like Emily. When Robert, was passed, uh, when Robert passed away, she just glorified God. 
And every time you hear Emily pray, or when you hear her speak, or when she gives you a message, she always says, God is amazing. That's the kind of fruit that I'm talking about that encourages you, that causes you to want to magnify the Lord and thank God for that Christian and thank God for Emily. And the next E is for expectation. And the tree planted by the rivers of water bringeth forth his fruit in his season. There's an expectation that comes with the beautiful things that we've been blessed with. And that expectation is to bring forth good fruit. The challenge to myself as I've been preparing this, is what kind of fruit do I bring in my life? I urge, as I urge myself to examine my heart, I urge each and every single one of us, I kind of feel when I do these things that, Gary, what are you on about? These are beautiful people of God that you're talking to. But sometimes it's good to uh, analyse ourselves and ask ourselves before the Lord, could I do more? Could I do this? Could I do that? Well, there's beautiful Christians, we can challenge ourselves and we can say, Lord, how can I improve? How can I uh, produce more fruit for your glory? So in conclusion, the trees, the trees, uh, the study of the, uh, these wonderful trees has been a real blessing uh, for me during this week. And I pray that it's been a blessing to you. Brothers and sisters, we should be, when we come to before the Lord in prayer in just a couple of moments, we should come with thanksgiving in our hearts that we've been planted here in Zion, that we've not just been given one river, eh, we've been given many blessings, many blessings that we can sap up in our roots and that we can bring forth fruit to glorify Christ. How good God has been in my life, and I'm sure how you can testify how good God has been in your life. God is not only hearing our prayers, brothers and sisters, God is answering our prayers. We may be, tonight, brothers and sisters, may we bring our brothers and sisters who have been faithful to the Lord before the Lord in prayer tonight. I'm speaking about Mike and Elizabeth. I'm speaking about our sister Charlotte. They need our prayers and they need uh, us to bear them up to the Lord. Uh, Mike is in hospital and he needs a lot of prayer. And the same with uh, Elizabeth. You know, when somebody falls ill, it's not just that person that's affected. It's, a, it's like dropping a, a stone in a pond and you can see the ripple effect. And the ripple effect not, doesn't it just affect the person that's sick. It affects the people around them and it affects their emotions. It affects their anxiety. So let's bear up uh, Mike and Elizabeth. Let's bear uh, Alison before the Lord in prayer as well, because Alison has got enough on her plate at the moment with her cancer, with the effects of the, the chemotherapy. Let's pray that, our, that, uh, the Lord, that, that Alison would feel the Lord strengthen her through this challenging time. And let's bring Charlotte before the Lord in prayer as well. You know, on Sunday, Sunday uh, afternoon, uh, as you know, we've got a special time of prayer for healing for the people who who has been brought before us. And we we're bringing Charlotte uh, before us. And what a blessing uh, Charlotte has been to me. I remember when I was a wee boy, and it was Charlotte that picked me and my mum and my brothers and took us here to Zion. Charlotte's been a beautiful, faithful servant of the Lord. Same with Mike, with the, uh, as I mentioned about the pastor's, the pastor's sermons. The Lord uh, has greatly used these beautiful saints. So let's come before the Lord in prayer.